All right, good afternoon and welcome everybody to Components of a Bridge Program. Um, I'm Sarah Goldhammer from the Southern Illinois Professional Development Center, and I'm here with Cece. I'm going to let her introduce herself. She's from ICCB. Hi, everyone. I am the new Associate Director of Adult Education and Literacy, um, specifically Data System Support. So um, I'm sure some of you have already uh, reached out to me with your DAISY questions. So I'm excited to be here. Thanks for joining us, Cece. I'm excited that you're here, too. So if you have any um, somewhat specific DAISY questions, you can put those in uh, chat or not specific, and Cece can answer those. I'm going to take you through the components of the bridge program. And um, first, though, let's kind of think about uh, what do you, for, for everybody who's here, for the people that are participating, how many of you, and it's, it's two in the afternoon, so this is the 2.30 in the afternoon, I'm a half an hour behind. So what do you know? If you feel like um, you have a pretty good understanding of bridge, stand up. Whether you have your computer, your video on or not, stand up because you've been sitting a lot of this day and you need to move around to engage the brain. Okay, now sit down. If you feel like, oh my gosh, I need lots of information about bridge, stand up. All right, now you can sit down. Okay, so now the next question is, what do you have in place? You can put this one in the chat. If you're currently running a bridge program, then do me a favor and in the chat, tell me what you're doing, what kind of a bridge you're running. And then the next question, I'm gonna go ahead and lead it up to that because if you wanna put them together, you can. What are you hoping to get out of this session in the next 30 minutes? Okay, we've got a healthcare bridge. Thanks, Walt. What else? And make sure if you can to put that you wanna put this to everybody so everybody can see it. Um, so, okay, you've got some bridge courses, looking for a program, a health careers program. Um, Oh, it says you can't do it to everybody. Interesting. All right, so then I'll just read them. Manufacturing, um, manufacturing, healthcare bridge, uh, healthcare office administrations, working on STEM, hospitality, great. Okay, we got a great um, combination of different bridges. So go ahead and keep putting in there if there's something specific that you're wanting to get out of this today because I will try my best to make sure that before we leave, um, you have that information. Okay, so I'm thinking about Bridge, and I will tell you also, Miley Signoroti is here as well. She's part of the SIPDC family, and she just alerted me that the uh, PowerPoint on the web, the uh, agenda is not correct, so I'm very sorry about that. She's getting it fixed for us, so if you want these slides, they will be corrected very soon, and a recording of this will go up as well. So, um, okay. So, um, you know what, Miley, can you make Cece a co-host? I don't think she is, because I want to make sure that she can see any questions that people have. Okay, all right. Now, so in thinking about a bridge, one of the first things, and a bunch of you already have some things created, but as you think about additional bridges, or if you're still creating a bridge, you need to make sure that you have a bridge to somewhere, hopefully a bridge to employment, a bridge to an ICAPS program, a bridge to post-secondary, something along that line. You don't wanna have a bridge to nowhere. So what industries are important in your region? And what are the characteristic of the targeted jobs? What do we wanna make sure that our students know so that they can get those jobs? Um, how do employers hire their workforce in your area? What are they looking for? And the only way to know that is to know some of the employers in your area. Um, what are the requirements of the jobs, the characteristics, and then the requirements of the job? And then ICAPS at IET programs, what's in place so that you can bridge to further training and requirements for entry into each of these programs? Where are we gonna get that information? Hopefully you know some employers, you have some partnerships. We'll talk about partnerships in a little bit, but there's also the IllinoisWorkNet.com. And if you're not familiar with, with Illinois WorkNet, um, you wanna make sure that you do because 
you want to make sure that you have the resources to some different data. You can have information for individuals and, and businesses, what is happening in your region, region, including information on disabled in, individuals and what kinds of opportunities are there for them. You can also look at regional employment trends and predictions. So all of that is part of the Illinois WorkNet. Um, you could do a whole, uh, and we have done whole webinars on just the, the resources that are available at Illinois WorkNet. So those are available to you. If you're interested in finding out about more about Illinois WorkNet, go explore or watch one of the recorded webinars on the ICAPS website. You also need to make sure that you obtain internal buy-in. Um, one of our panelists this morning talked about changing the culture. And if those around you don't buy into the importance of Bridge, if they don't see why it's going to, how it's going to help our students, why it's important and what their role is that they're not going to be a part of it. So your department, do your teachers know? Um, your larger institution, what program or, or what college you're affiliated with, do they understand the importance of bridge? And if they don't, you're probably the person who's gonna have to educate them. So the teachers and staff, the administrators, and also the support service providers. Uh, as we said this morning, it takes a champion. Somebody needs to sing the song and plow ahead and convince those around you that this is going to help um, your students to succeed. And it's gonna help your community as well because you're gonna have better educated and better prepared potential employees for your workforce. So who are your bridge partners? Besides that internal buy-in, we need to make sure that the educational providers around us also understand, are you going to bridge to a college, for instance, um, if they're gonna go on to an ICAPS, what are the educational providers that they might bridge to? Who else could be training partners with you? Who are the employers and employment related entities in your community? Um, support service providers. Again, this morning, one of our panelists talked about your WIOA partners and how important it was to engage with them because they can provide some of the support services for free for our learners. And our community agencies. Community agencies can provide a number. They can sometimes uh, provide the educational um, opportunities. They sometimes can, can provide some of those support services, and they also can provide you with learners, with students who want to be in bridge programs. So you want to make sure that you engage with your community partners. Okay, what are some of the common barriers to successful partnerships? Tradition, turf, time, and trouble. Um, this, this slide, this particular slide, has been in this slide deck um, I'm going to say probably since 2010, and it came from James Darden down at Shawnee Community College. So if any of you know James, he was the one who actually shared this with me initially whenever um, I did one of the information guides for Bridges. So we need to make sure that people are not feeling overstepped, that they see this as a mutually beneficial relationship as opposed to I'm going to come in and tell you what, what I'm going to do here. Um, I'm not taking over your turf. It's not going to take too much time. It's actually going to save you time because our learners are going to be more productive. So some of the common barriers we want to stay away from. So one of the resources, and I think Miley was going to put this in the chat. If she hasn't already, she will. On the agenda is um, the bridge planning notes. So I encourage you to download those, to use those. It's very comprehensive. It's looking at those partnerships, but then it'll also take you through the three components of Bridge. And the three program core elements are contextualized instruction, career development, and transition services. So as the name of this session says, the majority of the time, the rest of the time is going to be taking you through those three core elements to make sure that people have a full understanding of what the core elements are and what they could be. So let's take a little test. You didn't know that you know, not only is Sarah gonna ask you to stand up, now we're gonna take a quiz. This also is a handout that is on um, the agenda on the, the website, but because I wasn't sure if everybody, especially at 2.30 in the afternoon would be able to access that, I'm putting the questions up here. So I'm gonna let you read through the four on the screen. Now I'm gonna be quiet for a minute and let you think, are you teaching contextually in your program? And if you're not personally teaching, are your teachers teaching contextually? Okay. 
Okay, I'm getting a sometimes and a yes. Now I'm gonna ask you another question. Do you see some benefit to teaching contextually? If you're making sure that information is related to experiences that our students are already familiar with, if we make sure they're in the context of what the student already knows. Um, yeah, okay, let me take you to the next slide, which takes you to questions five, six, and seven. Okay, I'm getting yes, and this helps them to buy in, obviously. If this, if this is important, if I see how this is going to benefit me, I am going to understand it on a deeper level. I'm going to remember it and I'm gonna be able to use it and I'm probably gonna keep coming back. So I'm gonna make the case right here that whether you have, even in the classes that are not bridge classes, the more that we can encourage instructors to teach contextually, the better off our students are gonna be. They need to understand things at a deeper level. Here's the last, it's only 10 questions, I promise this quiz will not keep going. Whoops. All right, and Lucas mentioned that five to seven were on a different, different level, um, making sure that they understand how to, I'm getting a lot of yes, the buy-in, the five to seven, let me go back to that. Gather and analyze their own data, um, enrichment, extension, which goes back to, I need to learn this. So think about what a difference a classroom is if you have students who are feeling like, wow, this is really important information and I need to learn this and I can see how it relates to what I already know and what I need to know in order to be successful in life. Let me take the chat one more time. Yes, Julie, you're right. Julie mentioned that the students and teachers need to work and analyze together to build trust and demonstrate that the support teacher is often learning with them. Love that, great. All right, so in contextualized curriculum, um, which is part of contextual, so I kind of gave you examples of how to teach and learn contextually, but when we look at actually the curriculum that we might use, it integrates both the academic skills the industry occupation and knowledge. And then that third point on there is really just as important. It's relevant attitudes and behaviors. So not only what's the information I need and how might I use it, but in what context and in what way and how important it is to use this in a way that's going to benefit me both in daily life and in the world of work. It connects to relevant context. So let me give you an example of that real quickly. It's um, how we, share information will change depending on the context. How I might send somebody that I know well, I might send them a note, like Miley and I work together very closely. So the note that I might send her would be very different than somebody I'm beginning to engage with that doesn't know me, that doesn't have any um, idea about me. So students also need to realize that how they might interact with um, a boss might be different than how they interact with coworkers. Well, okay, in thinking a little bit deeper about contextualized learning in adult education. So in adult education, we may have been teaching decimals for years if we're teaching a math class, but in a healthcare bridge and a teaching contextually, we might have learners kind of understand the importance of decimals in healthcare. Obviously the example I have on the screen is um, taking a temperature. It's really important how that decimal point reads on there. And it's really important to understand um, the importance of decimals and putting them in the right place. So actually taking temperature readings and understanding the meaning of the decimal provide active application for students. And that's a big part of contextualization also is application. So another example might be getting a driver's license. And this is how long I've been doing bridge training. I have, my, my youngest is almost 26 years old. And whenever I started doing this training, he had his learner's permit and he was 15. So my example that I use with getting a driver's license, I decided to keep it in here anyway, because may, many of you can relate to this. So understanding the rules of the road, I would contend that someone who's going through a driver's ed 
uh, class and learning about the rules of the road probably most likely has that book knowledge more than someone like me who hasn't been through a class in years. However, behind the wheel, I would contend that I would still be a better performer. I could apply the skills better. Why? Because I have experience. And so that's why just knowing is different than being able to do. And that's why we want to make sure that we provide opportunities for contextualization as much as possible. And we wanna do that often because most of the times to really become good at something, we need to have multiple experiences over time. So we need to make sure that our students learn contextually from the very beginning. And that's why I'm saying we're talking about bridges, but let's encourage all of our teachers to teach in a contextualized way. And contextualization, thinks, think about it in a way it's react, it's relating, it's experiencing, it's applying, it's cooperating and transferring. And that comes from CORD, the Center for Occupational um, Research and Development. So why do we wanna do that? What are the benefits? of contextualization, it increases the transfer of knowledge and skills. As I mentioned before, we are gonna be able to understand how to use it and pull it up. We're gonna retain it at a much deeper level. It focuses on building those critical thinking skills. Some of those, that five through seven that Lucas pointed out was a different uh, level. Those are things like exploring and thinking about how do I break this information down? How do I apply it in different ways? Those are critical thinking skills. Students learn individual concepts and how they fit into that big picture. So collaborative ideas and activities. And what I always tell people about collaborative activities, because I could have you raise your hands or stand up. And if you're getting tired, if it's too much of me talking, please stand up right now if you use collaborative activities in the classroom. Yep, you're all standing up, right? Because we all do it. But do we make sure that we help our students understand why we're doing that? Because when students are engaged in group tasks that mirror um, what is needed at work and community situations, they are then gonna become better at it. So not only do we want to have them practice, but we need to make sure that they understand why they're collaborating and that this is a work skill. And it's actually going to make them a better employee and probably one that's gonna um, get promoted and get a raise if they can collaborate well. So we wanna make sure there's experiential learning opportunities. We wanna utilize those partners with field trips, guest speakers, job shadowing and job internships. The good news for us right now in this global pandemic time, there's gotta be some good news, right? That is that it's actually easier to ask for guest speakers to come in uh, because you're not asking for as much of their time. You can take virtual field trips. There's all kinds of opportunities online to show students a day in the life of a plumber, the day in the life of a CNC operator, uh, you fill in the, the of a phlebotomist, what you fill in the blank, whatever you're looking for. The other good news for us is that there is um, four, soon to be five, ICCB approved bridge curricula. There's one in healthcare, one in manufacturing, one in transportation distribution logistics, one in career pathways, which is a, a general one that is written at a little bit lower level and it provides opportunities to explore career pathways. If I'm not sure, I'm really interested in healthcare. What are the different opportunities that are out there? And then coming soon, hopefully by the end of the month, we'll have an information technology one as well. The good news for these approved bridge curricula is that um, it's easier and I, we've got CC on and we've, I think Jane Black is here also. So hopefully they'll nod their head in agreement. Um, it's, if it's already approved by ICCB, it's easier to get your bridge uh, program approved through ICCB if you're using an already approved curricula. And it gives you that step up. The other good news for us is Illinois has been doing bridges for a long time. So nobody should start with a blank sheet of paper or a blank screen everybody has a leg up already that they have experienced programs that can give them information. They have um, developed curricula that they can move into. And you can use lessons from these developed curricula, whether you're going to embrace the entire full bridge or not, you're free to use those lessons that are there. Okay. So that was a very fast and dirty contextualized curriculum and contextualized learning. Any thoughts or questions? Um, before I move on to the second component. 
All right, career development. Again, raise your hand or stand up or in some way indicate if you're doing something with career development, even outside of your bridge programs, have you developed something in your program for career development? Okay, got some hands up. Marvelous, thank you, thank you. And a lot of chat, very good. Okay, so why are you doing that? Hopefully because you know that providing career preparation um, in bridge programs integrate deeper career awareness and career exploration into the curriculum. Hopefully you already know that um, you, can, you want to make sure that students are aware of what types of careers are out there, that they can explore what are the requirements of that and the training that's needed in that career. And then lastly, how do I prepare for? And really and truly the training of career prep is usually in the, the ICAPS program more than the bridge. Experiential learning activities can really help all levels of instruction. If we incorporate job information at all levels, if we show, use career awareness surveys, um, show what could be, it can increase motivation and increase it, uh, retention for our students. Helping students understand the critical link between career awareness and their future. Understanding that um, everything that they learn can be applied to what they want, the direction that they want to go. How do they do that? Through goal setting, through career exploration, and through career planning. I have a slide at the end that gives you a lot of free resources if you want to infuse more career exploration in your program, there's a lot of opportunities for you. So how do we do that? I mentioned already field trips, tours of college sites, tours of partner facilities. And now the good news is a lot of these have virtual tours that we can use, guest speakers and job shadowing. You see that there's some overlap with that contextualized learning and instruction. And that's done on purpose because um, all of this should be messy and it all goes together. It's not like, okay, today we're gonna do one thing and tomorrow we're gonna do another thing. Those three components meld together to be a complete bridge program. Uh, we also want to make sure that we integrate career development into bridge programs. How do we do that? Making sure that we have the expectations of the work world in our classrooms. Um, one of my favorite early bridge instructors was, did a manufacturing bridge and he brought in a time clock and he had the students punch their time. That really helped them to understand the work ethic because then he did a math lesson that they had to calculate their hours, figure out their pay, they weren't really getting paid, but giving them that real world work experience, giving them that look into the attitudes and behaviors that are important and being on time um, and coming to work ready to work, those are really important work skills. Again, I'm not gonna read all these on the slide. I'm gonna be quiet and let you think about the importance of the different essential skills for work and for life and how those are already being incorporated into your program and how else could they be incorporated. Okay. Again, I've got some more resources for you in just a second, because this is a quick and dirty 30 minutes of the core elements of Bridge, which takes us to our third one, Transition Services. And Transition Services considers the barriers to Bridge success because we are teaching humans and sometimes money gets in the way, maybe a lack of technology or understanding how to use technology, uh, personal situations can get in the way, um, and career. Sometimes uh, what they want and what they need to do right now might be some of the, the barriers to bridge success. There were some nice things written in the chat. Sorry to be a little disjointed, but I have to capture them. Uh, modeling by instructors. Thank you, very important also in our bridge is modeling how to be a good employee. Find the career, train for the career, get the job, keep the job. There you go. Thanks for all those. Transition services are like scaffolding. Speaking of kind of a employment um, reference, construction, you might be running a construction bridge. 
um, or something that would lead to a construction ICAPS, the scaffolding supports a student and provides them information assistance assistance that they need to successfully move from adult education to post-secondary or occupational programs, workforce, or to an ICAPS program. And the thing about scaffolding is it's not meant to be there forever. Scaffolding is temporary. So after they get some additional skills, we take some of the scaffolding down and the students keep getting more independent and more capable as time goes by as we take that scaffolding away. So transition services include things like um, career counseling, personal counseling, academic counseling, resources and referrals to reduce barriers. This is where it comes back to earlier. What, is, what can your WIOA partners provide? Uh, remember, they, some of our panelists talked about this morning because what you see on the screen are things that usually cost money. So what maybe does a, another agency provide? What does a sister college provide? Or if you are in a college program, what do they provide? Or what do your WIOA partners provide? So some resources for you, because there's a lot here, right? There's a lot to provide. The bridge planning notes, which Miley, I believe already put into the chat. Um, the ICCB contextualized curriculum, which I already showed to you. The employability skills toolkit. This is a free 505 page a uh, document that you can download just pieces of it. There's a lesson plans that are fun, that are interactive. There's um, PowerPoints that you can use um, and you can manipulate them and make them the way that you want it to be. So all kinds of great lessons on teamwork, on communication, on adaptability, all of those great uh, essential life and work skills. The Illinois WorkNet, I think Miley put that in um, the, the chat as well. And then lastly, mentors. Tomorrow, before we finish up for the um, Transition Academy, Bevan's going to talk a little bit about mentors and how to get a mentor if you would like to have one. So what's your next step? A little quote from Winston Churchill, it's better to do something rather than nothing while waiting to do everything. So it sounds like a lot of you already have some bridges in place. So I would encourage you to think about how else could I enhance my bridge programming? I would think about what other bridges could I offer? And um, what do I need? And I have um, the Employability Skills Toolkit. Brenda, I will get that for you. It's, it's called the North Carolina Employability Schools Skills Toolkit. And um, I will put that in, on the agenda underneath with the resources. I'll add that to, to that um, at that point. But I have hogged almost the entire 30 minutes. Um, Cece, I'm sorry, I told you that I would um, ask you if you had anything to share. So now that we have two minutes left, do you have anything to share? That is totally all right. Um, thank you so much for this presentation. Even I learned um, a couple of things, so I'm sure that it was um, very useful to all of our attendees. So, um, but if you have any specific bridge-related questions, um, feel free to reach out to me. All right. And actually, you know what, Cece, there was a question earlier on. Julie, I know that you put something in. So I would encourage you, Julie, to actually reach out to Cece by email. That um, her, her email is there on the screen if you want uh, some clarification. And any of you, I can tell you, I've only known Cece for a short period of time, and I have found her to be extremely responsive. And so I encourage you guys to uh, let her know how you can work with her and that she can answer your questions to serve our students to the best of our ability. Otherwise, it's time to get to our three o'clock session. So thank you all of you for joining us um, for Components of a Bridge Program and we'll see you at the next session, but this session is going to close. You have to get off the train. <laughs>